that to me was shocking right there. But then I discovered something more. So I'll give you my citations for this next information so you can evaluate whether you find it reliable or not. I, the way I did my research is I, I would read books, then I would look at their footnotes to see where they had gotten that information. Then I would often get those books and read those footnotes and then order those books and read those footnotes and on and on. So one of the books that I read was re really a fairly well-known one, Israel in the Mind of America, published by a very mainstream establishment publisher. And the author was a very mainstream uh, author. He had been diplomatic correspondent for the New York Times. He had been at Harvard. He'd written a number of well-regarded, very establishment nonfiction books. Well, in this book, he had a few pages in which he told about a secret Zionist society that had operated in the United States of which Louis Brandeis, while a Supreme Court justice, had been a leader. So I looked at where he got that information, and I went to that source. It turned out to be from a scholarly journal called the American Jewish Historical Quarterly, a very respected journal. So then I looked at the author. Well, is this a reliable author? Who wrote this very, to me, explosive information? And turned out to be a, a well-regarded Israeli historian at a, a mainstream uh, Israeli university. She had written an article in 1975 called The Parashim, a secret episode in American Zionist history. Uh, and she told about what this was, an elitist secret society. The word meant Pharisees and separate. They would go around the country and influence people to push this Zionist agenda. By the way, at this time, the Jewish population were not Zionists at all. The large majority were not Zionists. Many were opposed to Zionism. This was a, a very, very fringe uh, element to a certain regard. Then in this secret society, they even had a secret induction ceremony so that when somebody joined this society, and many, their membership included professors and Harvard, you know, recent Harvard graduates and uh, doctors, significant people around the country were sometimes members. And in this initiation ceremony, they were told by the inductor, and they swore to this, until our purpose shall be accomplished, you will be the fellow of a brotherhood whose bond you will regard as greater than any other in your life, dearer than that of family, of school, of nation. As early as November 1915, a leader of the Parashim went around suggesting that the British might gain some benefit from a formal declaration in support of a Jewish national homeland in Palestine. Those of you who have heard of the Balfour Declaration that came in 1917 might find this relevant. I'll get into that a little bit more. Let's remember what was going on during this time period now in the world, especially that involved Britain? Well, of course, in 1914 began what was called at that time the Great War of massive carnage. British forces in the first day of the Battle of the Somme lost, according to historians, somewhere around 50,000 to 60,000 men in one day of a battle that went on and on and on. 